the latest in skill acquisition and performance research from PerceptionAction.com. The Skill Acquisition News has launched. I'm Rob Gray, professor at Arizona State University and host of the Perception in Action podcast. In these daily briefings, I'm going to highlight some new research studies and other interesting developments in this area. If you're a coach, instructor, student, fellow academic, or technology developer, I hope these short previews of the latest and greatest from the field will encourage you to explore more if you're interested. What would you do if you had a second thumb on one hand? In a really interesting new article available as a preprint, Kaliba and colleagues examined how well people could learn to use this prosthetic device. I think this is a really intriguing way to study motor learning because it's essentially adding degrees of freedom that the performer has to learn to coordinate, which they can do with a bit of a struggle. One of the more interesting findings for me is how the synergies and coupling between our real fingers and thumbs are disrupted and altered by the new thumb. I think the new study published by Felton and colleagues in the Journal of Sports Science is a great example of how biomechanics can be used for individualized optimization of a movement solution. Despite many of the claims you might read, we really haven't reached a stage yet where we can apply biomechanics to effectively improve performance or reduce injury. In this study, the authors used a simulation to identify a change to a cricket bowler's delivery, specifically changing the front foot contact phase, which resulted in a 10% increase in the pitch speed at release from 79 to 86 miles per hour. Exciting stuff. I was very excited to have the Perception and Action podcast included as part of a fantastic set of resources compiled for teaching motor learning by the North American Society for the Psychology of Sport and Physical Activity, or NASPSA. Worst acronym ever. But anyway, along with podcasts, this includes computer-based lab exercises, lab assignments, and PowerPoint slides for lectures. It is a really great resource. In an interesting new study published in the Psychology of Sport and Exercise, Robin Jackson and colleagues show that knowing too much about your opponent ahead of time can actually make you more susceptible to deception. In the study, novice and expert soccer players watch videos of players attempting to dribble past them projected on a large screen and were asked to step in the direction they thought the player was headed. When the participant knew ahead of time that the opponent had a strong tendency to go in one direction or the other, a step over deceptive move tricked them more often. So too much knowledge can be a bad thing. Coming this week on the Perception and Action podcast, I'm going to look at individual differences in intrinsic dynamics. Do we all come to the first session in training with the same coordination tendencies? And do we learn via the same routes? To foreshadow the answer, no. How might individual differences explain why some performers seem to respond better to constraints manipulations and self-organize better than others? How should a coach be taking this into account in practice design? That's the latest from the world of skill acquisition. Find links to the articles I mentioned today and learn much more by subscribing to the Perception in Action podcast at perceptionaction.com. Have a great day and keep them coupled.